Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. I got this on various telegram channels. Please check the description to know more about the channels. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Bekliti Turkey Located in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey, the mysterious Gebekli Tepe, or Potli Hill, boasts of an archaeological mound that is 15 meters in height and over 300 meters in diameter. First identified in a survey conducted way back in the 1960s, this tell, or mound, flaunted a series of limestone slabs and T-shaped pillars, some of which were over 30 feet tall. Intrigued by these imposing finds, the researchers had conducted their detailed stratigraphy tests to reveal that the site is at least 11,000 years old, or 6,000 years older than Stonehenge. And oddly enough, in spite of this early Neolithic date, when humans had still not developed major tools to take on such gargantuan projects, the advanced ancient structures were built, by mere manpower, in a site with no proximate water source. Artists of the past not only offer insight to the architecture that once stood, but the builders responsible for it. Giants. The Precio art shows an overwhelming chaos and destruction about everywhere we look as far as 1600s to 1750s go. Our modern interpretation of these works is it was fantasy of the authors, well there's no historical evidence that Capriccio artists were making shit up. This interpretation appears to be a very convenient way to explain an inconvenient truth. There were many more of the so-called Capriccio artists working within the same time frame. They observed the same objects in a very similar manner. It's so easy to dismiss the evidence by pretending that their life work was fiction, but with a little research, it's very easy to prove their art reflected what they saw, as many of these fantasy structures still remain. The reality is, these paintings only offer a glimmering shred of insight of what once stood, even if it's only 1%, it's still significantly more than what we're being told. In 2000, in Novgorod, archaeologists found the oldest Russian manuscript, three wooden boards covered in wax, and completely written with psalms, which became widely known and were called the Novgorod Psalter. Judging by the radiocarbon analysis, and the inscription that in 999 the monk Asasius was made a priest in Suzdal, this book is the oldest example of Slavic writing. A few years ago, an exhibition of Novgorod archaeological finds was held in Sweden. A leading Swedish newspaper summarized the event as follows. When our ancestors carved runes in stone, the Slavs were already writing letters to each other. Another mystery of the Chinese Lunyu Caves is the lack of evidence. Imagine a huge cave complex, thousands of people mining stone, 900,000 cubic meters of excavated rock, and not a single mention of the construction, or even the existence of the complex. The fantastic expenditure of effort time and resources does not deserve even the slightest mention. I understand that officials don't like to talk about versions where phenomenal objects were built by ancient advanced civilizations, but then let them offer their version.
On Catalina Island in the Pacific Ocean, the remains of people whose height exceeded that of mankind were often found. If you don't look at the abundance of photographic collages online, the main evidence remains newspapers and magazine clippings mentioning finds of extraordinary size. For example, the excavation of Ralph Glidden that was written about in the newspapers. The largest Catalina Island skeleton found was 290 centimeters long. The question that all those who have actively researched its history have come to is, where are these skeletons today? The same newspapers say that Schlitten gave the skeletons to the Museum of the American Indian in New York, but they were never exhibited, remaining in the storerooms. Thousands of engravings, coats of arms, and coins, depicting unicorns. So what, again, did people, in different parts of the world, in different centuries, rave about the same thing? And why did they depict non-existent animals on coats of arms and coins? And often combined as it were, mythical unicorns with now living, for example, lions. You have to decide, maker fantasy coat of arms or a real one. Or maybe everything is simpler here. Unicorns actually existed, but if you admit it now, it would destroy the whole historical paradigm. If there is a horse, why can't it be assumed that there could have been a horse with a horn? Why not? The canal in the photo was created to connect the Aegean Sea with the Adriatic, According to history, it was supposedly cut by slaves on the orders of Alexander the Great. With hands and hammers. We admire the perfect smooth cut at the bottom of the canal. It looks like a single movement of the tool, and so on for seven kilometers. On the walls, even vertical cuts. I would see historians try to replicate such a result with hand tools. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.